So, Poppy, we're talking about the transformation of David Ortiz and Minnesota Twins versus Big Poppy and the birth of Babe Ruth, essentially, in Boston. <laughs> um, you, you know, I know Tom Kelly really wanted you to spread the ball around. It seemed to me that when you got to Boston, you changed not only your approach, but your demeanor. Tell us about the approach and kind of some of the coverage in the play. Okay, basically, um, when I was in Minnesota, I, my stand got me in trouble from the very beginning. You know, like my front leg was close to the play. And my first move to attack the ball was basically stepping out. Mm. So now, once, once you do that, I, I don't really like seeing player hit him close like that because it gave me the, the idea that they are trying to basically cover the outside part of the play, but their instinct is not that. It's basically going the opposite way. Yeah, because c- you're closed. You feel yeah. like you have to open up. Open up. And then when you open up, you leave yourself outside of a weak spot right here. Definitely. And then you feel like you have to open up to give yourself some room to hit mm. this pitch right here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So... I basically, that, that was one of the things that I, I, I thought it was giving me inches to, to try to cover everything around the plate, those 11 inches. So it feels like the minute I do this, right away my back come out of the strike zone, and this is how much mm-hmm. I cover. You know what I'm saying? So you can only cover the inside part because you were really yeah. open. Instead kind of, of facing to right center. Yeah, instead of, instead of covering 11 inches, I was covering three inches. Uh huh. So everything... From then and now there, I, have, I, I was having issues trying to hit that. And then if I hit it, it was with no power. It was basically... Yeah, almost chicken winging it out there. You know what I'm saying? Some flares. So once I came, I, I came to Boston... You and Manny got together and you started Me talking. and Manny got together. Manny was one of the greatest hitters I ever seen. Mm-hmm. He was on top of his game. And Manny used to work so much on his swing that it was ridiculous at some point. I mean, I, Manny was like... 24-7, trying to get better and better and better. Mm-hmm. I start chasing Manny because we pretty much had basically the same mechanic, the leg kick, you know. And then I, I, I kind of learned with him about, you know, being able to balance yourself. Mm-hmm. Because that's another thing that I learned from Manny. It was you don't want to land it too heavy mm-hmm. in your front leg because this is what you head normally do when you land it too heavy. Mm-hmm. You head move, and then the ball move, that's problem. You know that. So basically, everything we work on was stay balanced, stay calm. Balance, stay calm. So once you do this, you take absolutely control of everything that is coming. Get prepared early. And another thing that I got to point to, instead of hitting with my front foot closed, mm-hmm. I was more open. Mm. So... Instead of walking away from the ball, I was going to the pitcher. Mm. So now, that was my play cover. Now you have full coverage. I got full coverage. So now, and, and I also realized that I was one of the tall guys in the game mm-hmm. that was really quick with my hands uh-huh. inside the ball. So I don't feel like I had to shoot it to hit the inside pitch. But right, you so, didn't have to cheat to get to the inside pitch. So, Poppy, tell the folks at home, when you're in the batter's box, take us inside of that brain of yours. Mm-hmm. Tell us where are you looking for... Let, let's just say you have a guy like Roger Clemens, a guy, mm-hmm. a guy that throws 95 miles an hour. Yeah. Where are you looking for the pitch location, and what pitch are you looking for? To go there, I got to tell you, I started learning with experience mm-hmm. about pitcher sequence. Okay, the sequences, yeah. The sequences. And then I also used to track what they were trying to do, what kind of weapon... They want to use against me. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm facing a guy that throws 95 plus, mm-hmm. I know that we're going to try to elevate their, fa- their fastball, not let me stand it. Mm-hmm. And then after that, a guy like Roger Clemens will go split. to a split. Fastball up. He will, on he, will, he will overpower you and then go to the split. Uh-huh. That was his secret weapon. Mm-hmm. You know, I hit pretty good, I think, against Roger because I was looking for the fastball early in the count. What location? One location. Where? Right here. Clement liked to overpower you. He used to love overpower you and show you his fastball. He, he, he located the fastball away really well. But when, we was, when he was feeling good, mm-hmm. he would let just the fastball, the fastball fly mm-hmm. and trying to elevate it up in the strike zone. 
So he would let it eat. Yeah. So so where were you trying to hit the baseball? Say say you were in a fastball count mm -hmm. and you wanted to elevate the ball, maybe hit a home run to center yeah. field. What location are you looking for the ball? I'm trying to hit the ball right here in front of the plate. And right down the middle. Exactly. Okay. This was my approach right here. Boom. Yeah, I know. I saw it too, too many times. <laughs> <laughs> don't remind me. Um, t tell me, I, 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 people at home don't know how hard Manny Ramirez worked 24 7. He would get to the stadium sometimes at 10 a.m., hit all by himself, go back home lunch, and come back early. What were the lessons that you learned from him that made you even a better hitter? Manny, Manny was the type of hitter that incredibly he want to be perfect with his approach mm. at the play. This guy, he would work on his hands mm. so much. Like Manny sometimes, he wouldn't even go outside and he'd bite in practice. Mm -hmm. All he needed was the cage to make sure that he get his, he get his hands working. Manny would have told me, okay, we're going to hit Landry here in the cage. We're going to hit Landry to the middle. He loved, he used to love just working on the opposite field opposite field, because he feels like the pitch away is the one that you got to reach out for. Mm -hmm. The pitch middle in, they come to you. So you don't have to go and chase it, you know? So I want to work with the one that I think it can get me in trouble. It can get me in trouble. What she was, the pitch, the pitch middle away. Take away the pitcher's strength. Exactly. Poppy, I played so many games against you. I almost knew when you were feeling good, bad, and different, right? And I knew when you were on fire, which was very often. But we always knew where you were in the lineup, and the minute you popped out of that dugout from the Red Sox, going number 34 with all your gear, it felt like it was a game changer. For me, I want to know, take, me, take the fans at home, what the hell you were thinking about when you would go, <laughs> walk us through that. Because when you weren't doing that, I felt really good, because that means you weren't feeling it. The minute you start <laughs> spitting, I would look at Jeter and go, oh shit, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> What were you thinking about? Reality, part of your routine and rhythm. The reality is that when I was on the on deck, I was turning at the pitcher, just, just trying to get on his head, just, just watching the sequence. Because remember, the good thing about hitting what I was hitting was that I was surrounded by good hitters. Mm -hmm. I had many Ramirez hitting behind me. Mm -hmm. And then I have a second hole hitter that definitely was on fire. I mean, Bill Johnny Mueller, Damon, Johnny Damon, Petey. Petey. I mean, I have always, I was surrounded by good hitters. So I know that the guy, would try, he, he was trying to use his best stuff against this guy. Mm -hmm. And I know he was going to come to me the same way. Gonna, he was going to approach me the same way. I, I, start, I, I noticed that I used to uh, spit on my glove after people start pointing at it. But reality is, or reality was, that I wasn't thinking about that. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about Anthony. what the guy was going to attack me with. What was the history between the two of us? Anthony. What did he give me before? Mm. Those are the things that were going through my head while I was doing all, yeah, yeah. all this stuff right here. I wasn't even thinking. Of, I wasn't there feeling this. I was there just spitting out my mind because you know you only have seconds. Yeah to go back into that. And I was doing that while I was in the box almost. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you are not allowed, hey, you guys, you folks at home, you're not allowed to play baseball with the empty mind. Mm -hmm. Your mind gotta be busy all the time. You, Regardless you, of what you think of both of us. <laughs> <laughs> your mind had to stay busy because the only advantage that you have in baseball is what you think ahead, you know? so. We used to go back to the history. The guy strike me out yeah, with a don't fastball. Over, don't overthink, basically. Exactly. Don't overthink. You made your game plan before you get in here, and then you go with your game plan once you get here. You can be just thinking while you're here because that guy over there will kill you. Hey, Poppy, you know, one of the things that the folks at home don't know is, you know, we played for almost 15 years against each other, and we had some major battles. I mean, we had fights, we had wars, we had ALCS battles. But what's real it, competition, real competition. But there was so much respect. I told you about how much Mariano and Jeter and how much those guys respect you guys. But what people don't know is in my toughest times in my career, it was guys like you and Manny. You would take me to your house. Tiffany would cook us a nice meal. And we would stay up to three, four o'clock in the morning, having a few drinks, having a cigar, but really breaking down how difficult this game is. I mean, this game, I know personally, brought me to my knees, brought me to tears many me too. times. Me and too. I remember the one that time game to play. Where, where you felt like you were getting a little bit out of shape and we spoke. Yep. And then you got in tremendous shape. And then obviously the rest is history. 
So even though we're battling out there, I mean, the love and, and, and just the collaboration between players is, is pretty awesome. It goes beyond. It goes beyond. I mean, we, we, we battle on the field, but we feel we, we feel sure that we good things. I remember one time we went, we went to uh, uh, New York to play, and you were going through hell at the time. And I remember me on the under circle, I look at you, and I was like... Yeah, breathe. Like, breathe, <laughs> breathe, because I was feeling bad, though, because yeah. I don't like to see my boy, you know, feeling all the heat, all the pressure, you know what I'm saying? Because you're talking about one of the greatest players that ever played the game, and you want to watch him performing at the highest level so all those kids out there can learn from mm -hmm. watching him. So that, those are the things that happen behind the scenes that people don't know sometimes. Yeah, and I couldn't tell you how much that meant to me, <clears throat> how much that meant to me at the time. And it was funny because <clears throat> <clears throat> what's interesting is it's funny because sometimes after games, you would text me and say, call me number 13. And you would say, hey, what I saw out there today wasn't you. I want to see better body language. You're not taking your A swing. Come on, you're better than that. I mean, there's no doubt that he wanted to beat the brains out of me in between the nine innings, and I did to him. But when it, once it was over, we wanted to see Big Poppy, we wanted to see Manny, Pedro, the great players of our game, do well regardless of his great rivalry. And I just want to tell you that I'm very thankful to you and Manny. If he was here, I would tell him as well of, of, of how much that meant to me. Me as well, brother. All right. There you guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>